Good afternoon. Thank you very much, Chris. Um, I feel much safer with you around since you are my family doctor. <laughs> <laughs> um, sport injuries. Um, yeah. After the glorious uh, summer that we went through with the Olympics, all of us have become part of the Olympic legacy. That means we owe to understand sport, we owe to promote sport, and also we owe to look after sport injuries. Everybody was excited about it, even the Royal College of Surgeons, they appoint me as a sport injury uh, tutor. Um, I was even asked to present to yourselves uh, today in 20 minutes all the sport injuries. <laughs> <laughs> that is a task too far. Um, so following further advice by Chris, it was thought it's much better if we look into cases and then we expand around the different parts of the anatomy what um, we can offer in orthopedic services. Therefore, that is the case scenario one um, you may see in your practices is a swimmer that um, he feels that the humeral head is going out every time he's doing um, swimming practice, particular the pull phase of the crawl stroke. Um, this is a repetitive injury. This cannot be an acute kind of injury. We call it overuse injury in sports medicine. That means a repetition of a same action causes a trouble. And the trouble is that with time, the labrum, that is the cartilage of the uh, hip, of the shoulder joint, becomes loose in a certain part, in the front and inferior one. And as a result, the patient experiences subluxation. Eventually, because of the increased laxity, he will, he will start pushing over the rotator cuff and then he will have the impeachment sort of symptoms that Mike explained earlier. This is what the sports physicians and the, ourselves would call swimmer's shoulder. You can see on this uh, depiction the shoulder joint. Um, you can see the labrum at the front. And this is the area that we're talking about. Also, the rotator cuff as a group on the top of the humeral head. So as a result, laxity on that part will increase the movement. And because of that, the humeral head will press against the rotator cuff. And the individual will feel um, problems with it. Now, going back again, what, although Mike explained and the, he shows very well the test, what is impeachment syndrome? Impeachment syndrome is problem with the rotator cuff. It can start as tendinopathy, and later on it may start to produce tearings into the substance of the tendons of the rotator cuff. So collectively, tendinopathy and tears are called impeachment syndrome. Scarring will follow because of the bleeding from the repetitive action into the rotator cuff. And later on, you can see even changes on the bone part of the shoulder joint, and these spurs under the subacromial area that they reduce further the space that the rotator cuff tendons have to go through. Causes? very rare to be a violent event, a violent movement, most likely is a chronic event, gradually will happen, with the, the overuse injury, the repetition of the same action. And the usual action is movement of the shoulder with sudden acceleration using a kind of instrument, a, a cricket bat, a javelin, baseball, this kind of sport. Now, you can be part of the treatment process before you have to refer the athlete to us. And this can be on the usually on the stage one, when the patient comes with discomfort, pain, he's talking about he feels more heavier the shoulder. So at that part of the stage one, you can stop the process 
by applying some conservative management that would come to it. The second stage is when, as I said, the bleeding produces scar tissue. And later on is the stage three that tearings of the rotator cuff will occur. What is the treatment? Rest, anti inflammatories, injection, physiotherapy, coaching training, adjustment techniques. More or less, return to sport will be delayed very like two to three months. I believe in, your, in the practices you can apply this principle. You can rest someone by understanding the problem. You can prescribe analgesia and anti inflammatories. Many of you, you may be able to inject, and I will encourage that. Refer to physiotherapist, in particular somebody with knowledge of sport injuries. And I think that is where your involvement should come into treating um, athletes. I have to state as well from the very beginning, there are not any cases in sport surgery that you need to refer to us as emergencies. Most of the nasty ones, fractures or dislocations, very likely they will happen in a kind of setup of a sport event or a setup that they will go to the hospital. If one escapes for any reason and comes to the practice and then you recognize that, yes, they are emergencies. But most of the conditions we look into sport injuries are not emergencies. They can refer them later on. You don't have a pressure to send them to us. And what you do in surgery? Well, you, you can see this is the area, the space that we are talking about under the subacromia area. You can see this bump, the pressure that we intend to remove and create, expand this space. So this is what a surgeon may do. He will remove the scar tissue. He will open the subacromia space. He will decompress. And if there are any tearings of the rotator cuff tendons, he will repair them. Other things we may do around shoulder pathologies is a dislocation. Now, most, most likely nowadays, arthroscopically, there will be a kind of operation that will repair, again, this weak area, the anterior inferior part of the labrum, the bancar lesion, and some kind of a tight up of the capsule around the shoulder joint to, produce, to restrain uh, laxity. Will you have to refer everyone with um, a dislocation of the shoulder to a specialist? The answer is perhaps not. What you need to look is how many times the frequency, in other words, what sport ambitions the individual has got and how old he is. So the young, sporty, even with the first dislocation, is much better if you refer him because very likely he will have this banca lesion that will be a weakness, and in that case he won't be able to perform his sport. Mike mentioned the slap lesions. I repeat again because it's more relevant to my position. Slap lesions, you see them to the young. Usually they occur if you fall directly on the shoulder, and you see them very often in rugby. They are rugby injuries. Mike explained all the pathology around it. I will add to it, they are very painful during the night. When the individual lies down, because of the gravity and the further drop backwards of the shoulder joint, they feel more discomfort. And what it is, is where the biceps is attached on the top end of the glenoid, this is the area that there is a damage that cartilage stairs can occur. It's the 12 hour. And in all of the sports individuals, we recommend surgery and repair. SJ injuries, I'm not going to, again, repeat the same. Right, there are some rugby players that they can perform sport even with complete dislocation of the SJ. However, in the majority of the cases, 
some kind of repair sous loquet. Nowadays, we are minimally invasive. We use these endobatons, tight ropes. The classic learning is by putting a screw um, to stabilize the joint that you have to remove later on. Fractures, well, no doubt, in a, in a young, athletic population, they need to be sorted very early. And these are the kind of emergencies that I find unlikely they will turn up to your practice. Very likely they will be taken to the hospital straight away. Moving on, scenario number two, the knee joint. Classic, we are now in the winter holidays season, and the scenario is a 32 years old, went skiing on a ski holiday, fell over, knee became acutely swollen, went to the local facility, an SEL rupture was diagnosed. He returned back, he does well, he goes to the physiotherapy, um, he recovers from the swelling, the swelling regresses, goes, feels better. April comes, longer day, better weather, he's very athletic, he's got to play football, he cannot do it. Then he feels functionally unstable. Then he keeps swelling up, keeps giving way to him, and again, in the end, an MRI scan, in addition to the clinical examination, reconfirms the anterior cruciate ligament rupture. Epidemiology of it. With my other hat as the secretary of the British Orthopedic Sports and Trauma Association, we did a study, it's near now seven years ago, we look nationwide how often these injuries occur, and we have found that you expect 30 new injuries per 100,000 people per year. In London, it's slightly higher, it's 41, we're almost 40. So every year you expect 41,000. Depends how big are your practices. You can work out the figure, how many of these um, young people you will see. Anatomy, just to remind you very simply, um, the anterior cruciate ligament is located at the center of the knee. What it does primarily is to stop the tibia to move excessively forward in comparison to the femur. It has got another one role that is um, less known is to stop the excessive external rotation of the knee as well. I think we are in the right location to put some of the horns up. I think we ought to do that. Um, how this injury occur? It occurs by a violent twisting movement with the foot stuck on the ground. This is the most classic way in team sport, rugby or football. Also can happen by hyperextension of the knee and usually this occurs in skiers. The patient usually will experience that something occur into his knee, a pop or an audible sort of click of some description, he will say that. And the knee will become swollen. Without a swelling, it's, it's unlikely that you will suspect anterior cruciate ligament rupture. Or the opposite. After an injury, an acute swelling, you should suspect anterior cruciate ligament rupture except it's proven otherwise. There are some tests that can be performed, and also we should remember that into the complexity of the injury, other structures may be also damaged, as the meniscus and the side ligaments, the lateral ligament, usually the posterior lateral, what is called nowadays, also the medial ligament too. Lachman test is sensitive. And if you were to choose one test to do in your practice, perhaps this is the one you ought to know. You can see in this slide that what the clinician is doing, he can put his knee under the thigh of the patient. With the left hand, he's supporting the thigh, and then he's moving forward the tibia in about 30 degrees or so of flexion is relatively painless compared to any other test. And if you were to play in the practice with one test, I would encourage you to do just that. Treatment of the anterior cruciate ligament rupture. We do not operate early. 
anterior cruciate ligament rupture. You have learned our lesson. During the 90s, many of the anterior cruciate ligament ruptures were repaired acutely. So much that many people that were holidaying abroad, in Switzerland in particular, they went to the local hospital, they were diagnosed and they went through an operation for a reconstruction. Stability returned. So they did well in terms of stability. But they developed other problems. They developed stiffness and they developed collection of fluid. Therefore, we look into all this and we found that there is a condition with a very long name, arthrofibrosis, that what it means, it means that scar tissue develops into the knee that is traumatized already. And if you operate early, scar tissue will be developed and the knee, although will be stable, will continue in a large percentage to be stiff and also producing recurrent swellings. So we don't operate early anterior cruciate ligament ruptures. What we do, we prefer to send them to the physiotherapist, get the swelling all go, promote the range of movement, promote strengthening of the thigh muscles, and in a period around four weeks onwards, we may opt to operate. Now, do we need to operate everyone? If you take all patients with anterior cruciate ligament rupture and you take them through a physiotherapy program, scientific evidence from Canada, United States, and France suggests that you will end up in three equal groups in the end. You will have a very good group. That means the patient will perceive that the knee is completely stable. You will have the very bad group. Despite physiotherapy, the knee still will give way or will collect fluid. And you have a third group that's in between. They are all right with daily activities, but they cannot perform the sport they used to do. So they have a choice either to continue with the sport they were doing or to alter their habits and do something else. So altogether, if you follow physiotherapy, you will have 50% that they will do well and 50% they are not going to do well. What about osteoarthritis? There's a question I'm asked all the time. Will they get osteoarthritis? Again, we know from good research that if you take all the anterior cruciate ligament ruptures and you follow the patients later on, all of them, they will develop osteoarthritis. Without surgery, they will develop osteoarthritis. For in how long? Research so far suggesting anything from 14 to 17 years. If you have someone who is in, in his 20s, is that good enough? Do you have to bring it up for play? I believe it is. I would recommend to a young, what is young, definitely in their 20s and perhaps up to mid-30s, I will recommend perhaps a reconstruction. I will bring that up. If they were to go through surgery, will they develop osteoarthritis? Well, surgery can reduce the osteoarthritis by 40 to 50 percent. So for 100 percent, you come to 60 percent or 50 percent. Well, it's not bad enough. So age is important and functional instability what the patient perceives is important. Third group, since we are talking about sport, professional sportsmen or high activity sportsmen would recommend a reconstruction because we expect all these problems anyway. Brace or no brace? Well, if somebody goes through a successful physiotherapy program, is a casual sort of sportsman, skiers in particular, then you may, they may feel much better with a brace on. And definitely there are some in the industry, some good braces, more Jewish one, that they can go on holiday, on ski holiday with a brace on, they feel much better. So yes, why not? 
So what we say? We say that surgery is indicated for the young individual with functional instability enjoying cutting and twisting sports, football rugby. What you do? Well, minimally invasive again, is it? We try to cut as less as possible, and also we follow aggressive rehab programs to get them going very early. What we use? Well, we have to use a graft. We cannot repair the torn anterior cruciate ligament. The blood supply is so thin and precarious that you cannot really achieve repair by try end-to-end -end repair them. We use from the patient a graft that most of the surgeons now have swifted to the hamstrings. So we take pieces of hamstrings and we cleverly prepare them and we make them an anterior cruciate ligament. Bone patella bone graft is as good and actually, there is a drive now in the high performer to use bone patella bone, although it's not clear. Allografts, not very popular in Europe. Very popular in the United States and some parts in Australia. Not very popular in Europe. Why is that? Well, first of all, there, is, there are logistics to set them up. Cadaveric material, preserve it, keep it, cost, all of that, that we didn't take it on. Also in Europe, we had this epidemics of mad cow diseases and issues like that. The transmission of diseases really, the risk very low, but it's playing up in our minds in Europe that it may be the case, so they are not that popular. We don't use allografts that often. And we're aiming for short leg of stay. Usually some places they go home the same day. Maximum perhaps one night stay in the hospital. That's all it is, and they go home. Rehab, well, there is a rehab involved, very important, as important as the surgery itself. More or less, absence from work could be around the three weeks. They start with crutches in most of us for a couple of weeks. And then there is a set program of things to do. Return to sports will be delayed between six to eight months, depends on what they do. Meniscal injuries, very common. All of us who come across to them. Partial excision or repair. We more excise than repair, although we promote repair and less ex excision. To settle the argument, the meniscus is vascularized on the outer third. It has got blood on the outer third. The inner two thirds, the, definitely the very inner third is, not, is a vascular. The in between may be some blood supply or not. So which one we very likely are going to repair? We're going to repair the peripheral, that means the out third ones, in a young individual with the time of presentation very near to the injury. And also, we try to repair the lateral meniscus tear. Why? It's only recently we realized that lateral meniscus, if its excise in a big length causes early osteoarthritis. There is this issue of um, chondros changes if you excise too much of a lateral meniscus. So we try to preserve lateral meniscus. I'm not going to expand about the meniscus. It's a big talk about I'm, I'm staying with the young people in sport because the majority are not sport-related injuries, are degenerative tears. I don't want to fail you. The percentage of sport injuries related to meniscal tears is, is more. The majority is degenerative tears. And I'm sure my colleague later on will exp explain more about that, but in degenerative tears, there is a caution. And if we were to discuss about emergencies or not, as I said, there is no emergency in sports surgery. However, a lock knee or a knee that is locking is an indication for referral to the surgeon. These are, these, these are the only indications, clear cut. Pain on the inner aspect of the knee is not. You can refer the patient to physiotherapy and see what happens. If later on, eight to 12 weeks, still there is pain present, then, for the young, you may organize an MRI scan and see a tearing that 
is not behaving so you refer. For the old, if you organize an MRI scan, you will see a meniscal lesion. There is no doubt you will see a medial meniscus posterior horn lesion. This is not a reason to refer. If we take an MRI scan to most of us, we'll see meniscal lesions. It's something that we know. So what do you do? Well, the MRI scan, why order the MRI scan? Because you want to see if there's an instability of the tearing. If you do an MRI scan and you see an unstable tearing, perhaps it's a good idea to send for consideration for surgery to sort it out. If it's a stable meniscal lesion, you encourage further physiotherapy. Or you shift your attention to degeneration and arthritis management. So bear this in mind. Posterior cruciate ligament ruptures rarely go operate, except they are part of a complex ligament injuries pattern, or they fail conservative management. What is that? It, it occurs only in 5 to 10% of people when they run downhill or even quick downstairs because the thigh moves first compared to the tibia, they feel instability. Very rare we operate those. All the high profile goalkeepers, they get this kind of injury. Names like Kirkland, all of that, they had this injury. The treat by conservative means they did well. Articular cartilage damages, three types. The very young with the so called osteochondritis in the past, the traumatic ones, and the osteoarthritis, so the extensive ones, disease of the articular cartilage. Different things you can do depends on the age. In the very young, we do these uh, drillings. Articular cartilage transplant, not at all in that age group. They are more reserved for trauma. In osteoarthritis, already was mentioned, articular cartilage transplant is not really a good idea. It's very extensive disease. Perhaps you will opt, depending on the patient age, for osteotomies or a knee replacement. Fractures, you need to fix them to the young. Again, we'll talk about sports. Tendon repairs, well, if you have a patella tendon rupture, you lose the ability to extend the knee, so they need to be repaired. Very rarely they come to you on Monday and say, well, you know, something wrong with my knee, and they cannot extend the knee. Usually, when the accident occurs, they go to the hospital, they are seen, they are assessed, and they have an operation. Caution, I'm moving away from the sports world to the older individual. The old, the young, with the same mechanism, the young one will get patella tendon rupture, the old one will get a quadriceps rupture. They are missed. These are the kind of injuries, the quadriceps rupture, that go missing. Why? Because, as I said, usually happen to the old people. They come downstairs, vision problems, balance problems, they miss a step, so they just land awkwardly. They pull the quadriceps, it ruptures. Very likely won't go to the hospital, will wait for Monday to see you. Even if it goes to the hospital, the wife says, let's go to the hospital, they will take an x-ray, nothing will show up, you are fine, go. So he will go. Even when it comes to yourselves, they are not the best historians, as you know, more senior people. Nevertheless, you don't see much. You, you cannot see much from this injury. It is missed. Also, it can be missed. Why? Because apparently, even if they are able to lift the leg, they do that. They lift it with some degree of loss of full extension. They cannot do that. Because the adductors still, they can lift the leg. If you lift it yourself for them, then the minute you leave your hand, it will go to that. And they are the kind of cases we see very often, particularly in the private sector. Because they come, because after so many weeks, still they're not able, they limp, they don't to walk, and we realize it was a quadriceps rupture. So all people with painful knee miss a couple of steps, just put your hand above the knee, uh, the patella, and look if there's any pain or any gap. Very likely they may have a quadriceps rupture. <coughs> Plica, again, I don't want to expand. As they say in sport, we're talking sports, sexy things. Uh, unexplained pain, think for something very rare. Um, it, when the knee is in embryonic state, it has got diaphragms like the heart, so it's four compartments. When we are born very soon, all those they go, and it, we may have a remnant of one of these membranes, usually is the anterior medial one, that uh, we, again, it would take a, a scan to all of us, we may find it in most of us. However, the ones that become problematic is usually is with martial art, is the one that bleeds from jerky movements, like full uh, extensive movements, and then you can't find anything else 
wrong with the knee, and if you ask a radiologist to bless his mind if it's a plica, he may even confirm it with a special images on the MRI scan. Third scenario, my last scenario. 30 years old, set a half, football player, complained for deep hip pain and catching, feeling every time he runs or lands after jumping. Internal rotation and adduction of the hip would produce this pain. What it is, is a labrum tear into the hip joint. It's happening, and it's happening in football very often. If you take an MRI scan, it will be inconclusive. You need an MRI arthrogram. I don't want to repeat again what Mike said, but it's like the shoulder joint. MRI arthrogram will be more sensitive to show labrum tears. MRI scan of the hip joint, you're not going to see much. So bear in mind, if you have to organize a scan, it's an MRI arthrogram you need. Epidemiology, 20% of growing pain in athletes. Um, in athletes, it's, it's acute, it's not gradual, cut off pain. And it's associated with clicking, cutting, or locking sensation. The treatment for the, no, the non-sportsman can be all of that I put down there, conservative, rest, protect, weight bearing. In reality, arthroscopic surgery is very good, it's very successful. Usually they are not very big, these stairs. You can excise them and the player will be back play football successfully. In more complex scenario with detachments of uh, a big part of the labrum tear, usually you can see that with a background of um, um, issues around the acetabulum with um, dysplasias of acetabulum. Many dancers, girls, ballerinas, they have this kind of issues. Then we make it more complex, they may need repair of the peak tearing of the labrum. Also, they may be considered for further cover of the acetabulum with complex osteotomies that I don't want to bore you. It's not part of my, disc my um, lecture. Another sort of called again sexy term, FAIs. Became, you must receive letters come to the practice. FAIs, FAIs is more recent thing, is it? Well, it has to do with what we know, femoral acetabulum ibidzmen. And what it is, if you can see from above the hip, is usually the cam lesion, this, this bump over there, is a repetitive injury again. With time, you develop extra, like an exostosis or an osteophyte on the neck of the femur that causes stiffness in the sportsman. This can happen as well on the other bone, the acetabulum, you can see this extra bone, that is called cam lesion, that is called pincer lesion. The combination can be in both, yes? Men, footballers in their 30s, they get mostly that. Girls, early age dancers, they get usually that from, as I said, acetabulum dysplasia. Arthroscopy, again, treatment of choice. What we do, zoop, we clean the abnormal bone and we improve mobility of the hip joint. Other things very quickly, before I close, we do in sports surgery. We can repair Achilles tendons. If this tendon to tendon, and depends on the uh, activity they do. Also, other tendons may be ruptured, that the posterior tibialis of the foot, and then you lose your arch of your foot, so we may opt to repair those. Elbow biceps, Michael already referred to it. We fix displaced fractures around the ankle joint. Metatarsal fractures, Beckham fractures. If they are the so-called Jones fractures, that means in a specific area between the proximal part of the fifth metatarsal and the diaphysis, the blood supply is not that brilliant, so they tend to non-unite. In a high-profile sportsman, we will recommend surgery straight away. We don't want to wait if it's going to heal or not, they take x rays in six weeks. In a high-profile sportsman, we will recommend straight away fixation, even in the very young, active, Fellow, we may recommend surgery very early. Osteochondral defects, they appear with, you can see over there, they appear with repeat, repetitive uh, ankle sprains. Um, conservative, obviously. 
if they fell or if they become a loose body sent into the joint arthroscopically, we can do all sorts of things, fix them back, um, drill to promote some blood supply, even articular cuts as a transplant can be a choice. Low back pain you heard earlier on with sciaticas in the sportsman, we recommend minimal invasive techniques to sort it out. Tennis elbows, the ones 2 to 5% that, that don't respond properly, you may opt some kind of release. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Panos. It's quite clear that uh, to be involved in sports injuries, you have to be, maintain your generalist skills being involved in all parts of uh, orthopedics. So, we've got some questions. Sports injuries. Yes. We have a mic through the middle. Thanks. I have to watch a lot of football and a duress with my two boys. When, when watching sports injuries on the telly, sometimes we see horrid pictures, but the assessment is done in such a short time. How's that? The, the assessment on the field? No, of the footballers. On the it's, field? Yeah. On the field. You're right. Now, there are some guidelines that they are promoted by the different sp the football association, if we talk about football, how all this should take place. I think we came a long way. The incident with Mwaba, for instance, the Hart fellow, demonstrated how far we came from the times that you had somewhere park an ambulance, just in case something happened, to where we are now, that all the medical staff, the physiotherapy staff, even at the ground, uh, uh, doctors, they need to have specific training in sport injuries to assess and take further, if necessary, problems. So I know what you say in terms of, uh, of timing, but most of the times they are experienced enough, the ones that they are practicing around the clubs, to get to know if the player can continue or should come off or even needs further referral so to have ready, you know, the St. John's Ambulance or whatever to take them somewhere else. Okay. Certainly for me, one of the, uh, the take-home messages was what you were saying about, you know, two issues around ACL um, injuries, which I've always assumed was quite an urgent thing to, uh, to sort out. So it's actually quite reassuring to know that, um, that, that not only have we got time, but actually you always worry about ACL injuries and you know, whether your technique is good enough, but you, what you're saying about if there's no swelling, then there's not going to be an ACL tear. Uh, unlikely. And uh, and extremely unlikely. Extremely that's, unlikely. That's, that's, quite, that's quite useful. Okay, are there any more questions around? Okay, well, just, just before we break then for our lunch, thank you very much thank you. indeed. Thank you. Um,